Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can deploy a TLS SQL Vault server in a Kubernetes cluster using KubeVault. Before doing that, let's take a look at what is a Vault server. A Vault server is a Kubernetes customer resource definition which is used to deploy a Hashicorp Vault instance in a Kubernetes cluster in a Kubernetes native declarative way. And when a Vault server is created, the KubeVault operator will deploy a Vault and create the necessary Kubernetes resources required for this Vault server. Let's take a look at the YAML file. In the time section, you can see the kind, which is Vault server. I've specified the name and the namespace in the metadata section. For the TLS, we're using the SART Manager Managed TLS. You can also use self-signed Managed TLS as well. I've created a Vault issuer of kind issuer here. I'm using version 1.9.2, and we're going to deploy three replicas. In the allow secret engines field, I'm allowing secret engines from all namespaces of MySQL type only. So using this allow secret engines field, you can allow or disallow different sort of secret engine to be attached to this particular vault server. For termination policy, just I have set to do not terminate. For backend, I'm using Raft. For the ancillary section, I'm using Google KMS GCS to auto ancill this vault server. So our vault will generate five secret share and it will require at least two of them to auto ancill this vault. I've provided the necessary information for this GCS bucket that I have already created. To communicate with this, we'll need to create a GCP credential, which is the GCP credit that I've already created. For monitoring purpose, I'm using Prometheus. We can see the issuer YAML here, which is vault issuer in the demo spaces. For that, we need to create a secret vault C that I have already created. We can see that our GCS bucket that will store the vault answer keys on the root token, which is currently empty. Now, let's check the secret that I have already created for this vault server. I've already created the GCP initial to communicate with the GCP bucket and the vault CA for the vault issuer. I've already created the vault issuer, which I can see here. So our vault issuer has already been created. Now we are ready to deploy our vault server. Let's deploy the vault server. So our vault pod has started to come up. Let's check the secret for the TLS certificates. We can see our vault client service, vault server service, and vault storage service has already been created. We can also check our vault status. We can see our vault is currently in initializing phase. We have specified that we require three replicas. Currently, we have zero replicas. We currently have one replicas, and vault server is in critical stage. Let's check our GCS bucket to see if the keys are successfully stored there. Yes, we can see our vault root token and the ANSI keys are stored here. Let's check the status again. We can see currently we have two ready replicas and vault server is in critical state. So a vault server is in critical state, which means that the vault server is accepting connection we can communicate with this vault server, but the desired number of replicas is not sufficient. So we have specified three ready replicas now, but we have only two ready replicas. So the vault server will move to the ready state once the all the three replicas are ready. So current, right now we can see that all the replicas are ready. So vault server is in ready state. So we have successfully deployed a vault server. Now, if I want to check the vault server status using the vault CLI, and the enable security engines or apply any other command, we need to export some environment variables. Let's export them one by one. So let's export the vault address. Let's keep the TLS for the demo purposes. Now, if I want to export the vault root token, what I can do? As I've used the JSON bucket to store the root token, I could have also used the AWS Azure or even Kubernetes secret to store the answer keys and the root token. So in that way, 
we would need different CLI to get and decrypt the vault root token. But using the keep vault CLI, you can do it very simply using the following command. So using this command, you can get the decrypted vault root token. And if you want to get only the value, you can provide the additional flag, the value only flag here. So let's try this command. So if I run this command, I should get the name and the value here. Yes, we can see the name and the value of the vault root token. If I want the only value, then I can provide the value only flag. So we can see we get only the value of the vault root token. Now let's export our vault root token. So our vault root token has an export. Let's export for from vault services. Now, if I check the vault status, we can see the vault is unsealed and initialized. If I check the vault secret list, we can see the default enabled secret engines. Okay. So now, if I want to delete our vault server, let's try to delete it. We can see that our webhook has stopped it from getting deleted. Why? Because we have specified the termination policy to do not terminate. So if you if I want to delete it, I need to change the termination policy. So let's patch the termination policy to wipe out. So termination policy wipeout will delete all the resources. So let's try to delete the whole server now. So we can see our vault server is getting deleted. So termination policy wipeout will not only delete these resources, but it will also delete the root token and the unsealed keys that was stored in the GCS bucket. We can see those are gone right now. So we have created, uh, deployed a vault server and we have checked the status and we have successfully deleted the vault server. If you want to know more about Vault Server or Key Vault in general, feel free to follow this following URL.